Welcome. It's This is the Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 13th of May, 2024. Thanks for being here with us. Um, in terms of agenda topics, we've got uh, upcoming calendar to review, then Jenkins in Google Summer of Code, quick overview, a few action items, contributor spotlight, governance topics, a proposal to cancel our next meeting, Java 17 and Jenkins Weekly, uh, Azure expenses, AWS credits, and spring security, end of public support, which I think we'll probably cover well enough in this earlier topic. Any other topics that need to be added to the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So in terms of upcoming calendar, tomorrow we'll release Jenkins 2.458. Uh, looking, looking good, developing. Wednesday, we deliver 2.452.1. Thanks, Alex, for being the release lead. The changelog and upgrade guide have already been uh, completed and merged. I'll do a webinar with Darren Pope on Thursday, reviewing what's new in that release. I'm not aware of any upcoming major events. Anything on the upcoming calendar that needs to be discussed further? Okay, next topic then is Google Summer of Code. Congratulations to the Jenkins Project. Five projects have been accepted and funded by Google Summer of Code. Assuming they reach completion, that means there will be, I think it's 500 per, per project that is donated to the Jenkins Project. So our budget will increase or our, our bank account will increase. So thanks to everyone. Uh, Alex, thank you especially as one of the lead mentors. Special thanks to Chris Stern as well. He's mentoring two of the projects. Action items. We've got the attribution entries for the downloads page. Basil, anything you'd like to report there? No, I'm still not made much progress on this, but hopefully it can get back to it once I finish prototyping some of this um, uh, Jakarta upgrade work. Yeah, and the Jakarta upgrade work is intensely valuable. Thanks for doing that. Kevin Martin's work on the Jenkins, the Chinese Jenkins site is delayed by me, and it'll continue being delayed by me for a while because I've got other things that are higher priority. On community activity, Kevin is the person in the contributor spotlight currently. Alyssa Tong is next, and then Jan Farachik and Vandit Singh are both upcoming. Jan, we know from UI work, and Vandit Singh is the one who's doing the vast majority of the work on the documentation, the versioned documentation site. So thanks to each of those in advance. Governance topics. So here, my first question to everyone, are you okay if we cancel the meeting in two weeks because it occurs on a Jenkins public holiday? Or not on a, on a US public holiday. Jenkins doesn't have public holidays. Oops. So yeah, that's it, fine. Fine from yes, but yeah. it's also holidays in Germany. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, so at what... least the children have holidays, so I'm not there as well. Great. All right. Thank you. And Bruno, you're okay with that as well? Yes, of course. Great. Thank you. All right. Maybe one thing we can consider for the future is wouldn't it make sense if we change the schedule to four weeks and not two weeks. So I'm not really sure we, we have a, the agenda is in the last time we're always very small and the right. topics are repeating. So maybe just a suggestion. So now I we think, have already four weeks, but maybe. I think that's a good, good suggestion. What do others think? I think we could choose Right now, there's no requirement to meet every two weeks. Every four weeks works well for the UX SIG. Anything that if we needed something more more fr frequently than every four weeks, we could certainly schedule a meeting mm -hmm. every two weeks for those cases where we need it. Yeah. So any dispute from others, would you be willing to switch to uh, switch to meet every four weeks? Yeah, it makes sense if we also do that for the UX SIG, but we might need to meet more frequently if there's something like a plugin that we need to delist from the update center 
-hmm. that like, those have been the most urgent topics that have come up recently. Um, for example, uh, plugins that are using closed source libraries and things like that. So if, if, if a case like that comes up again, where, where our, our timely response is important to some external company, then you might want to schedule a special meeting for that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's perfectly reasonable that any member of the board can certainly schedule a board meeting and say, let's meet. Um, and if we meet on a, a, an every four week cadence, typically I'm great with that. So let me call for a vote then all in favor show a yay. Okay. I see three, I see five. Great. All right. Thank you very much. That's even better. All right. Anything else on canceling the next governance meeting or governance meeting changes? Okay, next topic then. Basel raised the question in the mailing list, in the developer mailing list, to propose to move the Jenkins requirement for Java 17. So when we compile with and require Java 17 runtime to be two weeks earlier than the proposal had been previously offered. Uh, Basel, do you want to give an overview of that? Do you want to give some summary? Uh, well, this would just be in weekly releases, not in LTS. So um, we had we had planned for the LTS that is shipping uh, in late October to, to be the first LTS that requires Java 17. So as you as you show in that list that you've compiled, uh, that would be something like 2.476 approximately, depending on which weekly we end up choosing. Um, but the one before that, um, I'm not I'm not proposing any change there. So that would still require Java 11. Um, it's just that on the weekly side, there are a lot of changes that are building up that depend on a requirement of Java 17. And the more we wait to introduce Java 17, the more risk we take on by letting these changes pile up uh, so we can remove risk and increase efficiency um, by requiring Java 17 a little earlier. That will allow us to start merging some of these patches in this very long chain of patches that will eventually lead us to a new version of Spring Security. Any questions from others? I, I like it. It does mean that we'll choose the LTS baseline something other than the most recent weekly. It will be one or two weeks prior, and I think that's fine. We've done that before for the this June when we go to August 7, that one will be two or three weeks prior as the chosen baseline. Wouldn't sorry, uh, I'm not sure if I correctly understand. Wouldn't it make more sense if we we have chosen uh, the two four six two point three on October the second? This is the last one we use uh, Java eleven. Wouldn't it make sense that the next major and uh, not the next LTS release, the next weekly release already uses Java seventeen? So that was, you just described what I had sort of originally assumed, Uli, before spring security complications kicked in. Then I I did the reverse work on the schedule. What we have to do is we can't change to Java 17 on weekly until after the chosen baseline for this release is selected. So it's it's the we choose the baseline and then six weeks later we deliver that baseline as a dot one. Mm -hmm. And what this is what what Basel's suggesting is let's six weeks prior to this, I had proposed five weeks prior to this, we should we should switch to Java 17 on weekly right after we've chosen the baseline. And what Basel said is no, if we go two weeks earlier than that we could we could yeah. get two more weeks to do the merge to do the 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 patch mm -hmm. chain at the cost of eliminating two choices from the baseline selection but we right. would still have many other choices going back further so did that answer your question Uli, or was i not clear yeah i think i'm still not convinced why we don't use 
2.463s Java 17. Oh, oh, we we probably will use 2.463 as Java 17, but 2.463 is back here at June. It actually ah, okay. gets created as a weekly on June yeah. 19th. Okay, it's just the LTS uh, schedule here. Okay, sorry. Uh, right. I thought this is the uh, weekly schedule that does not make sense for me. So, okay. Right, right. Good I've point. I should have I should have put here, and maybe that's what we should put in the notes here is, is let's put a weekly in here to make it even clearer. So I think it's June 20, June 19, 2024. Required Java 17 in weekly. Mm -hmm. Okay. 2.463. And then the week prior, June 12, 2024, whoops, required Java 11 in weekly. No, I understand. <laughs> yeah, and, and I apologize. That that is a you you made a good point. I should have highlighted that that this is this is a purely an LTS. The sequence of four at the end are just LTSs, right? Do we have any uh, concerns about communicating this externally? So I think right now um, we have the admin monitor and we've got the blog post that we uh, wrote back when we announced this two plus two plus two scheme. And I don't think the blog post is um, specific about LTS versus weekly. Uh, it right. just has a very vague uh, warning that we're going to do something late October. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and I think the, the the admin monitor is pretty similar. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we could at least write a blog post that um, gives this decision uh, about, uh, you know, expect a weekly to require Java 17 in the end of June and expect the LTS to require Java 17 a few months after that. Um, I like that. Well, so, I, I, now I, I am wholeheartedly in support of the blog post. Do you think we've got enough time that we could also do an admin monitor in weekly to alert weekly consumers that, hey, you're going to see this knowing that we'll discard the admin monitor or disable it after, after the date has happened. And that admin monitor will effectively never arrive in an LTS. Yeah, I don't I don't feel too strongly about that because I doubt I doubt that there's enough people using the weekly and enough time between now and uh what is it, June June twelfth when we plan on doing this to really deploy something and test it and get it out to enough people. It seems mm -hmm. like it might be a lot of effort for very few eyeballs actually seeing it. Um you know, if, if we maybe this seems like it belongs more properly in the broader project to kind of automate and productize Java version upgrades uh, right. where, you know, we could, there, there, there seems to be a more general improvement that we could make to like make this admin monitor uh, have a, awareness of LTS versus weekly and institute a, a process around, um, around updating both dates. Um, but with the current with the current infrastructure, uh, I think any solution we would come up with would probably be a one off solution, and wouldn't wouldn't reach enough people in time. So I, I basically just think it's too late. Um, okay. But I think I think it, it is a legitimate problem that we that we should solve as part of productizing or operationalizing Java upgrades in general. I mean, I'm willing to hear other points of view if if you think we should still try our best for this case. Or if you think it isn't too late, I I think weekly adoption is relatively crisp. But I think you're right that there is a general case, and we probably don't have enough time to solve the general case. And solving it just for the specific case, the blog post is probably every bit as effective. Other comments comments from others. Okay. 
then I'm not sure this one even needs a vote as much. Oh, I guess let's hear your opinion. So by show of hands, are you in favor of the blog post? Okay, I see. Uh, yep. Okay, good. So blog post it is. Great. Thank you. And Basil, are you willing to write that? Do you want me to write yeah, it? What's your preference? I can write the blog post. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks very much. Anything else we need to discuss on Java 17 and weekly? Okay. It's part of the Spring Security 6 upgrade. Thanks very much, Basel, for your work on Spring Security 6 upgrade. Lots of things happening there. On the next topic, the Azure expense status, our, our donation from Microsoft expires. Let's see, where'd it go? What? That's interesting. Oh, yes. The Azure donation expires August 31. What that means is we've got about 30,000 US dollars that we can spend up to August 31, but if any we haven't spent by August 31 disappears. And so what the infra team is doing is accelerating their use of Azure. Uh, they've started that acceleration and it will continue where our goal is to use all of that money if we possibly can use it wisely and well, but use all of that money before it expires August 31. Uh, the bill, the Azure bill in April for Continuous Delivery Foundation was only 4,500. So we're nicely under budget there still. Any questions on Azure expense status? Okay, next topic then is the AWS credits donation. And there we've received the credits and Damien has started the work to use those credits, but Heavy consumption of the credits won't happen until after August 31 or the Azure donation is consumed, whichever comes first. On the credit application, it's been submitted and we don't expect an answer until June or July of 2024. And those were all the topics I had. This spring security topic I put in the list is no different than last time. Any other topics we need to discuss today? All right. Thanks then. I'll recording will be available after about 24 hours.